This will be a video series of six parts showing Illumio as a general brief introduction to Illumio, the platform itself, and all of the functionalities. The first part, this video will be about the dashboard. The next video will be about the configurations of the first integration and then some of the data flows. Then we will have a video about running the integration, seeing the results of the data going from one system to the other system. And then there will be a video about the entity transformers, the possibilities of mapping and changing the data. Then we will have a Lumio as a caching system, making use of the storage and search of things. Uh, afterwards, we will go for a final video that is the additional settings that are within Lumio. So we have split them up in different parts. So you have the possibility to look for the specific parts which you're interested. But I can also highly recommend to watch all of the parts in those sequence. So first of all, the dashboard. As probably have, you have noticed, Alumio is a web-based environment where you can log in through a uh, web browser. And once you log in, you see this dashboard as a first site. So on the top of the dashboard, we have the health monitor. The health monitor is simply just a first indication if anything is going right or wrong with the environment. In this case, we have all of the hearts on green, which means everything is going all right. Below that, we have the statistics. And the statistics are talking about tasks. And tasks within Alumio is data. So as we are mostly implemented for integrations for e-commerce landscapes, we can see that these data will be about like products, prices, stock, uh, customers, orders, any kind of that kind of information. However, Alumio is not limited to just e-commerce landscape. This could also be information, for example, about um, countries, people, trees, computers, literally everything. So for that reason, if there's a, a point of source which we can talk to and we can retrieve data from, Alumio can work with that data and then spread it to like other systems. However, in most cases, as mentioned before, we are uh, implemented for integrations for e-commerce landscape. So we're looking at this data could be a task, could be your product, your price, your order, anything like that. So to explain the six blocks that we have here on the screen, we actually only have to explain five blocks because the six block is simply a sum of the other blocks. So to explain the first one, new task, it's also good to explain how Alumio looks at data and how an IPaaS in general looks at data and how it processes them. So with, uh, to get uh, data from system A to system B, there's in most cases a two-step process. The first step is gathering the information and then that becomes a new task. And then there's a second step, which is sending out that information, which is a processing task. Of course, the moment you send that out, it also tries to reach the finish state or in some cases it fails. The reason we work this way is because system A does not have to be as strong as system B. For example, you have a system A that can pull like a thousand records into Alumio. However, system B says like, I can only handle like maybe a hundred records per minute. Therefore you cannot say like, okay, we pull everything through every minute because system B would be overloaded in that case. So for that, we can have this waiting list in the middle, which is your queue of new task and then you can provide through an automated scheduler saying like okay i want to send out a um, hundred tasks every minute to another system for example this is also very commonly used let's say you have one system providing for multiple systems let's take a pim uh, system as an example with multiple web shops of providing the products from that pim system towards those web shops let's say we have one pim system providing for three different web shops that would also mean that we pull in like let's say a thousand records for the three different systems and then we can say like for each system for their own performance we can say like okay the first system can maybe access those 100 per minute the other system is okay with like 500 per minute it's easier to fill and the third system can actually not really handle the workload and therefore we say we only want to fill that one overnight so we don't have the workload during the day those are all possibilities with this async uh, connection that we have there However, if you want to have more of a synchronous connection, it is possible to uh, enable what we call real-time processing. And real-time processing enables that the moment that data comes in, it becomes a task, but it becomes a processing task rather than a new task. And therefore it immediately starts going towards the uh, processing state and tries to get the finished or the filled state. Then we only have one block, which is not explained yet, which is skip task. And skip task is actually something we mostly see during the testing of integrations. So during the testing of integration, you might pull certain information in that certain information might not be exactly what you expected. And therefore you say like, hey, I would like to skip that. You can skip that manually or you can skip that in bulk, but you could also go for certain automated skips. A certain automated skip would be, let's say field X is equal to value Y. And therefore you would say, we don't have to send out this information. That could be, for example, there's a payment system and the payment system has like a certain payment uh, 
or the, the way that this, uh, it was paid, that payment uh, way was cash. And if it's cash, we don't have to send it to the other system, for example. Other thing we could also do within Illumio saying like, okay, we put Illumio as a caching system, but are we only going to send Delta versions of the data towards the other system? Which then also means that we only are going to send updates or new uh, versions of that information. Let's say we pull in the thousand uh, records and let's say those are thousand products. We only want to send products that have an update in price or stock towards the other system or that are actually new that are not seen by the system yet. So with that, you can have an uplink of maybe every minute because you're only sending out like three or five, maybe at a busy minute, 20 new uh, tasks towards the other system rather than trying to send through like a thousand through the line every minute. However, that would also mean that you have like 990 something skip tasks every minute, which is of course not something you would like to look at. So actually that is not applied on the skip task process, but that is applied during the creation of a task process. So that way you're only going to see tasks for data that are actually going to be sent all the way from system A towards system B. So therefore uh, you can only see those tasks. And it also means that let's say you would still like to see the information that was filtered out before, you can still check that from the log. So that is about the statistics and about the task and how Lumio looks at data. From there, we can zoom into further to the bottom where we can see the routes and the route that has a table overview of which routes are within the system and towards which uh, status those tasks are within that system. To zoom in a little bit more to talk about what is a route and how does that look like. So we can see at the connections and from the connections, we can look at what is a route. So from here, we can look into the routes. What is a route? So the route is the line on which the data walks on to go from point A to point B. Point A being the incoming configuration, where does the data come from? Point B being the outgoing configuration, where does the data go to? Again, taking the example of having one system providing for three other systems, that would mean you have one incoming configuration, three outgoing configurations, which are connected by three lines, so therefore three routes as well. Other th so this together, these three together, is Alumio asking every certain time tick for data. This is underlyingly handled by a cron job, which is a scheduler as within Alumio. So that means you could say, for example, I want Alumio to ask for data from this system for every minute or every five minutes, maybe once per hour, maybe only overnight, maybe only in the weekend. You can get very creative with your integrations of like how you would want to pull information at which certain moment. However, if you would say like, okay, I don't want to have Alumio pulling information, I want information to be sent towards Alumio, that is also possible. That will be through an HTTP proxy or a webhook. Whereas the HTTP proxy simply means, okay, Alumio becomes a platform where you can shoot information to. There's a certain trigger on system A and therefore it says, I send this information towards Alumio on these and these channels. Alumio knows, okay, I got this and this information on these channels. Therefore, I know I have to uh, get information from system B. I get that back within Alumio and I would send that back to system A. Another possibility is saying like, okay, I would like to send it towards a webhook, which is slightly smarter because a webhook is actually connected towards an incoming configuration, therefore to a route, and therefore also to an outgoing configuration. This, however, also means, let's say that system A gives a request towards Alumio, A, there is data for you, and it's this and this data. Alumio's webhook will just respond like, okay, I received the data. Uh, because it cannot give the response of what was the exact result of finishing the task because the task still has to go through the process of the incoming, the route, and the outgoing. But therefore, it is handled throughout the whole system. So with that, I explained the dashboard. I explained the data flows within Alumio. I explained the tasks. And within the next video, we'll go more into setting up one of those integrations and then showing how that would look like. So the only thing we didn't talk about so far is the entity transformers. The entity transformers is where you would map, change, and enrich your data. So that would be, for example, let's say system A has a customer and that customer has only a name field. And then system B has a customer that has a first name and a last name. That will mean that we can take that uh, name field, we can split it up in two, and we can fill the first name and we can fill the last name with that. Other options would be, for example, let's say you pull in uh, product information. But during that route of pulling in product information, we would also like to have the pricing information and maybe the stock information all mapped together and then sent out through other, other system. That's all possible within these entity transforms. Other things which are also very possible is let's say you are creating an order or, and because of you creating an order, you also have to do multiple steps of talking to multiple systems saying like, okay, we want to create this order in another system. We have to check if the customer that is connected to that order is already made. You get a response. No, sorry, the customer's not made yet. 
then we would send a response saying like, okay, we would like to create this customer. We create the customer, you get a certain ID back, and then you could map it towards another system. Maybe you can create that uh, same customer based on that ID in another system as well. So you can go between systems back and forth within just one route if you would have to need for uh, talking to multiple systems during one route. Thank you.